Uh, I'm very happy to introduce um, Guy McPherson to you all. Um, I said I'm not going to say much because he will have a presentation that will knock your socks off and it doesn't really need an, uh, an introduction. Um, so, Guy, please take over and knock your socks off. <laughs> Thanks especially to each of you for showing up. You're going to have to invest in socks. <laughs> I think so too. Apparently. We'll see about that. When these words were published in 1980 in an anthology by Woody Allen, little did he know that how long the lag was between greenhouse gas emissions and temperature rise. So in 1980, when we, these words were published, that's 34 years ago, if I'm doing the math right, we haven't yet experienced the temperature rise associated with greenhouse gases emitted in 1980. <coughs> we're still six years away. There's a 40-year lag between cause and effect, a 40-year lag between greenhouse gas emissions and temperature rise at the global level. It appears we didn't choose wisely. Some people like to consider themselves optimists other people's pessimists. I think I'm a realist. <laughs> and nobody here is going to enjoy that, by the way. You might not want to drink with me either. I suspect we will experience human extinction in the not very, very distant future as a result of climate change. We've never had a planet with humans on it at three and a half C above baseline. Baseline meaning the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, say 1750. We're headed for more than three and a half C above baseline in the near future. Human extinction will result from absence of habitat, not from our inability to be clever. <laughs> there is nobody more clever than us. And our bodies can tolerate temperature swings to a great extent. You came from outside. Inside is way more than a 4C temperature gradient. Where I live in southwestern New Mexico, the temperature, diurnal temperature fluctuation is commonly 30 degrees C. 30 degrees C. 50 or 60 degree temperature change during an individual day from morning till afternoon. And yet, here I am, seemingly alive. Or maybe it's an illusion. Maybe it's all a hologram. <laughs> We've known for a long time George Perkins March, the U.S. ambassador and naturalist, predicted in 1847 that if we burn fossil fuels, that will produce an urban heat island effect so that cities will retain their heat at night so they won't cool down as much as the countryside. And also, the planet will warm as a consequence of burning fossil fuels. Svante Arrhenius, about a half a century later, put some science to that and predicted a one degree C temperature rise 104 years later. So this was April of 1896 in the refereed journal literature and Svante Arrhenius, who went on to win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, predicted a 1C temperature rise 104 years, 104 years hence. And he missed it by that much. Temperature was up to about 3 quarters of a degree C, warmer than the beginning of the Industrial Revolution in the year 2000. We're now at about 0.85C above baseline, about 85 hundredths of a degree above the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, uh, which was about 14C. Guy Callender finally put the, put the theory to the test and demonstrated that, in fact, Earth had warmed. Global average temperature increased. In addition, Callender's hand-drawn graph, you know, in 1938, we didn't have fancy programs to draw our graphs for us. So when this paper was published in 1938, Callender demonstrated the temperature rise and also the 40-year lag. Notice there's a significant increase in temperature there at about 1915, and it just keeps going up. When did we start burning fossil fuels at scale? About 1870. So 40, 45 years later, we see a temperature rise, and it's not going back down. Yes, there are years in which the temperature fluctuates, but the trend is all up. Frank, Frank Capra, the filmmaker, working for GE, put out a short film in 1958. This is the height of the Cold War, the height of McCarthyism, 
when we were ter so terrified of Soviets in this country that we were training children to duck and cover under their desks, so that if a nuclear bomb hits and that desk is going to save you. Yeah. And Frank Capra, at the, at the height of the nuclear fear, writes, we're not only dealing with forces of far greater variety than even the atomic physicist encounters, but with life itself, and he's talking about climate change. He's talking about climate change leading to human extinction. Ivan Illich, the Austrian philosopher writing in Le Mans in early 1973, writes this unbelievably convoluted quote that something must have been lost in translation from Austria. Is it Austrian? Is it German? Demonstrating my ignorance. It'll be especially evident as we move along. So I've translated. I think what he's trying to say is industrial civilization is degrading, exhausting, and enslaving and threatens to cause human extinction. 1973, the year before we were producing the greenhouse gas emissions that are responsible for temperature rise today because of that 40 year lag. NOAA, last month, pointed out that for the 335th month in a row, I believe it is, the monthly global average temperature was at or above average relative to the 20th century average. So what that means is we haven't had a below average temperature month since February 1985. We would expect that each month would have a 50-50 chance of being slightly below average or slightly above average. But in fact, we haven't had a below average temperature month since February 1985. That's pretty remarkable. We know that the universe has between 10 to the 80th and 10 to 100th atoms in it. Atoms, those little tiny things. In the absence of general planetary warming, the odds against having the last below average temperature month being February 1985, the odds against that happening exceed the odds against plucking a single atom at random from the entire universe. These are long odds, I think. Global average temperature is rising. Robert Watson, or NASA, to Senate Environment Subcommittee on Environmental Pollution in June 1986, says we can expect significant changes in climate in the next few decades, leading to misery and human suffering, and ultimately to human extinction. What do you know? Five million people die early deaths every year because of climate change. It's almost as if there's misery and suffering. And finally, the United Nations Environment Group on Greenhouse Gases, Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases, in October 1990, points out that beyond one degree C may elicit rapid, unpredictable, and nonlinear responses that could lead to extensive ecosystem damage. Two important things to point out here. One C is the target, not two. And James Hansen finally, 24 years later, a couple of months ago, agreed that one C was the Rubicon we cannot cross. Up until that point, he'd been saying two was the dangerous threshold. Bill McKibben at 350.org. Every politician in the country still points that to 2C as being the Rubicon. Michael Mann, the climate scientist at Penn State University, they all are claiming that 2C is the, the magic number that we cannot cross. Nonsense. We've known for 24 years that 1C is catastrophic. The second important point here is that the impact will be on ecosystems. Beyond one degree C may elicit rapid, unpredictable, and nonlinear responses that could lead to extensive ecosystem damage. That's the important thing. We rely upon ecosystems for our lives. Not just for our well-being, but for our lives. Without a living planet, there's no humans. Without marshes to clean our water for us, there's no clean water. Without wildlands to produce food, there's no food. Ecosystems matter. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, in their fourth assessment, points out that we, we will experience more than 1.8 C by 2100, depending upon the emission scenario, up to 4.5 C. Remember, beyond 1 C may elicit rapid, unpredictable, and nonlinear responses to lead to extensive ecosystem damage. 1.8 C, more than 1.8 C, is truly dire, truly catastrophic, and the last we heard about this report was about a month after it was released. The mainstream media and the governments are complicit in covering up the information. <laughs>